Okay. So we are now recording. And we have a great question in the chat. How do you get the drawing and the whiteboard? So from on my computer screen, it shows on the bottom, I have a toolbar with my microphone and my video. And one of the choices is new chat, new share. And when you click on that new share button, you get the option of what you want your participants to see. So you can choose um, your desktop or a whiteboard. And so I double click on the whiteboard and that's what you, that's what you see. Then for, um, then to get, sorry, I'm reading the questions while I'm talking to you. While you are getting, that whiteboard on your screen, you as participants should see that you have um, an option at the top of your screen that I think it says viewing options. And with that viewing option, when you click there, you should see a list of things that you could do. And one of them is annotate. When you click on annotate, you get a new toolbar that pops up and it starts with select, which allows you to move things on the screen the T for text, which allows you to type. The draw looks like a little squiggle. And the stamp is what Selena is going to use to show us her answers when she completes her math. So as a reminder, when you're working with students, one, greet them into the whiteboard room and chit chat with them, make them feel comfortable and at home with you there. Give them that whiteboard um, and a few minutes to play with the tools if they're not familiar. Remind them about things like capital letters and how you make a capital letter when you type. And that when they are writing for you on the whiteboard, that typing has to look like what they would do on paper pencil. So they need to use that shift key to um, make a capital letter. They need to remember to put that period or question mark in there and make sure they know where those things are. We take it for granted because we do a lot of typing and keyboard work, but for some kids, this distance learning is really their first jump into the use of a computer. Some kids, reminder too, are not using a computer, they're using a mobile device. And they need to be reminded that even though it looks like they might be texting, they're not texting. So they need to remember to use all the rules that they would use in a classroom for writing. So I gave Selena the choice what she would like to do first, and she selected math. So I'm going to click on my new share, and I already have my CBMs up and running, ready, waiting for her. And I would definitely recommend having that ready as three separate tabs. If you're doing math, reading fluency, and comprehension, go ahead and have those tabs open so you can get to them quickly. So I click on my new share. I choose from that menu that pops up that I'm gonna use my Google Chrome so you can see that. And there you see now Selena's math assignment. And so I'm gonna invite her to go ahead and get started. You can use the whiteboard tools to draw your answer on the board. You can use the stamp option. You can show me your work on this page or you can use your paper and pencil right there at your desk. And a lot of times if you have a cooperative parent who's still in the room, you can help them position the camera so that you can see the student's desk um, if they are going to do some paper pencil. As the teacher for the math portion of the assessment, I'm going to let Zoom's features help me record her answers. So when she has marked her answers, I'm going to save my screen. And after she does that, I will, um, I will show you that. But on my, um, on my toolbar, one of the choices that I will get is saving the screen. And if you let Zoom save the screen for you, it will automatically make a folder specific to this meeting and it will save every screenshot in there. So I click 
I just click Save. Zoom does that automatically. And then I can move on and tell Selena that she can do her next, her next work. We'll pause just to let in a new participant. And then you'll notice that I'm moving my screen, but her answers didn't go away. So I'm gonna go back to my annotate menu, click on that and tell it to clear and clear all drawings. So then her answers go away. What she did saves on my, in my computer files. And go back to the mouse on that annotate tool scroll up and let Selena start working on those next two problems. And we, she'll do those two and I'll show you the, where to find these things now. So again, I'm gonna use my annotate, save that screen, clear her drawings, and I'll pause this share. and go to a new one. So here is my quick new share. This is my finder. And you can see here, I've got a Zoom folder right here at the top. And it tells me this one is today. And then you can see here it's recording but you can also see those screenshots so when i'm finished i'll have a series of screenshots sarah it's not showing your screenshots oh let's see still showing the um cbm for math let's go back to how about now that's it there you go. All right, so you see in my documents, there's the Zoom folder that Zoom creates for you. And then here is today's meeting. And when I open that folder, you can see that I'm recording. And then you can see those two screenshots. And those screenshots, I can then take a series of those, copy them right into a Word document, and then I can look at Selena's work. So I'll have to change what I'm sharing with you. Go back to my new to a new share. And my mouse has gone crazy. Anybody have any questions? Yes, I will show how to save those screens again. There's a question from the chat. All right, so let me, let me clean up my desktop just a minute. And we'll move to how to do that again. So, get my tools back. All right. <laughs> Close my chat. And here I'll put back up my screen share. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. There's my plain whiteboard. And I'm gonna to go to a new share. And I'm gonna share with you that Google Chrome. And this is where Selena would do her work. And then when I want to save it, I'm gonna to go to that toolbar and click on annotate. One of the options, it's on my display, it's the last one over, it's all the way to the right, and I click Save. 
and it comes up and it says the screen has saved. Then I'm gonna go to, um, go to my finder on my computer. I'm a MacBook user, so for me it's a finder. And then I'm gonna go to, go to my documents. And I will share that, that finder with you. And you can see in that finder, it shared a Zoom folder. I have a meeting list for today. And you can rename these when the meeting is over so it's easy for you to find them again. I renamed them with student last names, the dates, and then drop those into that student's file. And you can see that I've got a series of screenshots. And now let me get go back to my screen share. There's my plain whiteboard again. And hang on, we've got some messages in the chat. Let me check those. All right, perfect. All right, so there's how, we, how you can do your math. The next thing, Selena, what would you like to do next? Would you like to read or write? Let's read. Okay, so if I'm going to read, I'm gonna again have to change what I'm sharing with you so that blank screen goes away. And I want my Google Chrome to come back for you to see. And I do feel like when you use Zoom, you have to manage where you put those toolbars so that you can swap your tabs. Mine defaults to the top, which covers up my tabs. So do you see that reading passage? Yes, I do. As you ask students to do this, I use my cell phone for the timer. I make sure that I explain to students that what they see on the screen is more than anybody could read in one minute, because I don't want anyone to feel like they have to read that entire passage in a minute being the expectation can make some students feel very stressed. But because you are doing a reading fluency, you do need to make sure that you have either a blank sheet of paper and a pencil next to you so that you can jot down the student's errors and their stopping place so that you can then go back and find their words per minute and note what errors they have. Some people like to print out the assessor copy of the um, progress monitoring sheets, and you can put the student's name on that and make all of your annotations on that piece of paper while the student is reading to you. I don't like to have lots of loose papers laying around and the longer you work from home you may find too that you don't want stacks of paper laying around. Um, so you can use easy CBM's method of graphing and charting, you just enter your data straight into Easy CBM. So you can print out the assessor copy. You can drop it into a plastic sleeve and use a Visa V pen or a dry erase marker to make your notes on that. If you don't have any of those plastic sleeves, dropping it into a gallon size um, Ziploc bag also lets you use the same piece of paper for multiple students. So I would tell Selena, I'm gonna use my phone to set a timer. You have one minute to read. I would read her the directions from the top of the, um, the assessor copy of this particular passage. And then I would let her tell me when she was ready. I would hit the timer and ask her to read until she heard the timer go off. And all of those notes I would make for myself on the piece of paper or on my printout on my desk. Any questions about that reading fluency piece? This is probably the easiest one to do. So that leaves the writing, Selena. You saved the best hey. for last. <laughs> Team, my favorite. So with that, I'm gonna give her a whiteboard so she has a place to write. The my preference for online progress monitoring is correct writing sequences. However, you have to go with whatever the IEP says for a student. 
So because Celine is my student, I know that she has a correct writing sequence assessment. What I would do for students here is I give them two choices of a prompt. Um, Selena can write about um, her best spring break ever or her favorite, fill in the blank, whatever your prompt is for your students. You can give, those, give them two choices, put those on the screen even for them to read. You can do that with um, the text tool. Once she has selected her prompt, I would give her one minute to think and again, your cell phone timer is a great option here. And then you have to give her the time to write. If you have children who are used to writing paper and pencil, the standard three minutes of typing may not translate well to that. So you may see that you've got students who previously had 40, 50, 60 words, and now we're asking them to type and they don't know how, so there may be a drop there. So you may wanna adjust your time just slightly um, to allow for the difference between what they can type and what they can write. The other thing that you can do here is tell Selena to make sure she's got a paper and pencil when she comes to join you. Have her scoop back her computer screen so that you can see that she's writing and you can do a paper pencil assessment. So there, she's done it for us. She's um, tilted back. back, tilt that computer screen down and you can see what's on her desk so that I could ask her to actually write with paper and pencil. And then when she's finished, she can show that to me with um, taking a picture with a cell phone and texting it to me. If you don't want people to have your phone number, they can send your school email. She can hold it up so that you can see it. So there's lots of different ways you can get students to return that work to you once they've done it. And one thing to note when you're having the student write, so if I'm going to type and write up and choose the topic, my favorite spring break, um, I would start my sentence and um, right now I'm typing and you can't see it yet. So to note, if you don't, um, click in the box, press enter, and then click somewhere else on the screen, you will never see what I, what I was typing. So that's an important part of that to talk through to your students. If they don't click somewhere else, press enter at the end of their writing and then click somewhere else on the screen, you will not see what they have generated in their writing. And once it's up there, you can save that screen and then you have that, again, it'll go directly to that same Zoom folder. Any other progress monitoring questions? Once you have that finished, you can go back to Easy CBM and enter the student's scores so they stay there for you. All right, I don't see any, I don't see any questions, but please feel free to grab your mic. Here come my questions. These were all C easy CBM assessments. We at SCVCS, we often ask students to type those progress monitoring writing pieces. If your IEP goal doesn't ask for a time, then it is not necessary to time them. Just when you do a correct writing sequence, that is something that is timed by nature. So if your writing goals are just to write sentences or paragraphs, then it is not necessary to do that. Rachel, I, was, I want to jump in here on the, your writing and having them email it to you or screenshot. When you're progress monitoring, it is a form of assessment. So it would be really important that you were there to watch them do that. If you're using Word, that's fine. Um, but, I, you know, you're saying you have an email or screenshot and that would work as long as you were there while they were doing that using Zoom or using some other platform. But you know, the idea of watching them do it so that you know it is their work in a virtual setting isn't really important and is why we modeled this today so that you could see that. So the progress monitoring, because it reports to the IEP goals, the teacher should be live in some capacity to work with the student. 
and it is nice to be able to see students so you know what's going on. We have heard the craziest stories you might imagine about parents trying to help students with progress monitoring in the home setting. And most of the time it comes from a good place. Parents just want their children to do well, but it is important that you spend some time teaching parents what's going on and making sure they understand why it's not a good idea to give answers or prompt answers when they're doing this. You know, no standing behind the computer, holding up fingers or, or giving suggestions. Those are all conversations to have with parents before you get started with any of this. Anybody else have questions? And of course, Selena and I can tell you the best way to make sure this works well is go ahead and practice. Um, I had my own family log in on their computer and I sat beside it so I could see what it looked like from a student perspective before I asked a student to do this with me. And then Selena and I got together last week and made sure that we knew what we were doing and were familiar enough to demonstrate this to other people as well. So, do give yourself that opportunity to practice and tell your students, this is new for me, it's new for you. Kids are very forgiving and helpful. And if you do find once you get started, you have more questions, send them my way. The Edmodo group might be a good place to put them as well, because the more you do it, the the more tricks you learn. Thanks everybody for coming. Yeah. Selena, anything else for the recording? No, no, nothing that I can think of. Uh, Shalanda just asked if there was another online progress monitoring tool. If anybody has any other ideas, and Sarah, of course, please jump in. And you can type it into the box to share with Shalanda for online monitoring tools. So similar to the way that Sarah uh, showed you how you could screenshot. Uh, on the screen and I think you know the same thing with zoom you could generate and make your own in word um, and have the student annotate on top of your work if you're generating it as a teacher or creating something um, yourself Sarah do you have any other ideas or options Google makes it does a great job you can create a quiz in Google um, or just do a Google form and you can share that one of the options that you have as the moderator and you may even have it as a participant is that you can give um, control of the mouse to someone else in the room so if you wanted them to do something live on your screen you can give the student control of the mouse so they can select answers I like, to, I like to kind of keep a running record of what they do with um, actually writing, but that's certainly something you can do. Rachel, when you do the, um, the choose the stamps, on the top of the screen, um, you, you, you should see as a participant, you are viewing Sarah Love's screen. Right beside that, there's a view options drop down. If you click that box, it'll drop down and you press annotate. And on your screen should then generate the options for the student to choose the text, the drawing option, the stamp, and then it goes on from there. And then they can clear their screen, they can undo something, there's an eraser. So that's the screen um, options that you have there. And feel free to grab those annotate tools and test those out. So there you can see some of the stamp options on your screen. Any other questions? Sarah Shalanda asked, how do you give control of the mouse? Could you talk us through that? Sure. Um, on my main toolbar, I have my microphone, my video, the participants, polling, new share, pause share, whiteboard, and then something that looks like a mouse that says remote control. When I click down there, I can see everybody who's in the room so that I could just click on a participant and give them control of the mouse. And again, that's not something I've used a whole lot. So I would want to practice that with somebody before I started letting students do that. So I could be sure that I could take control of that mouse back.
Any other questions? Question. Well, Thera, thank you so much for demonstrating this with everyone. I knew this would be helpful. Um, our virtual schools are so skilled. This is what they do all day, every day. And so they have really great tips and strategies. So we hope this was helpful for everyone and we'll continue to generate some ideas um, of things that we can continue to share with you all um, as we generate our mini series of webinars to help you all as you're transitioning from brick and mortar to virtual settings. But I appreciate everyone's time and Sarah, I appreciate yours and your willingness to do this. Thanks everybody for coming. Have a great day. Stay well. Bye. Thank you.